is again it's a joy having everyone as we go into the word of god go to zechariah the book of zechariah we were there last sunday and we are back this sunday and next sunday we'll be concluding the book of zechariah it has 14 chapters and uh, so many things there to say so you cannot be preaching one sermon so therefore and i trust you have been enjoying the main the minor prophets my heart have been challenged i say to people i do not preach unless first i preach to myself as to be a blessing to me right for me to be a blessing to others and uh, may god continue to bless your heart zechariah chapter 7 will be handling verse chapters 7 and 8 and just one verse verse 3 of chapter 7 3 of chapter 7 of Zechariah and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts and to the prophets saying should I weep in the fifth month separating myself as I have done these so many years father enlighten our hearts today in Jesus' name amen and amen the question of fasting that's our subject the question of fasting after an interlude of about two years if you know this Zechariah was summoned to prophesy the occasion was a visit of a delegation from Bethel to Jerusalem to consult whether to continue to observe the national fast that had been instituted at the time of the captivity. They wanted to know at the time of the captivity we introduced this fast. Should we continue it? They needed divine direction. You know, in our lives, we need God's direction. Am I right? And we ask many, many questions. It's only a fool that doesn't ask questions. If a person does know, if you know everything, then you know nothing. So they ask, should we continue the fast? Or should we stop? That's what they wanted to know. So the question of fasting. In chapter 7, the first three verses came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even unto Chislai. Chislo was actually the Babylonian month for about November, December. And so it was close to our Christmas. Not the best time to fast, Christmas. But they wanted to know whether to fast. Verse 2. When they had sent unto the house of God, Teresa and Regemilak and their men to pray before the Lord. So the first thing they did, they sent two of their key men to pray, intercede. Talk to the Lord. You notice that in verse 2 of chapter 7? The two men were sent to the house of God to pray. The temple was not fully completed, but they had started and they have reached a little way. And it would appear that services were still held at the temple. So they sent these two men of God. They said, first, go and pray. When you pray, God answers prayer. But then in verse 3 of chapter 7 of Zechariah. Not only that, but hear what they said now. And to speak unto the priest, which were in the house of the Lord of hosts. And to the prophet saying, should we weep in the fifth month? Separating ourselves as we have done these many years. Should we continue with our fasting? Should we weep? So look, look first at the, the inquiry. This is a great inquiry. They were inquiring, the first three verses. 
But God's servants, as they inquired, they were consulted. And you know the great servants, the, th the two prophets, plus they had priests? But they especially consulted with Haggai and Zechariah. They were the prophets that were there. And so the two men, after praying, they went to them. They consulted with the priests. They consulted especially with the prophets. And they asked the prophets regarding the continuation of the fast of the fifth month, which commemorated the burning of Jerusalem and the temple. And so they asked. And in 2 Kings 25, 8 through 9, we're not going there, but you can just take that. 2 Kings 25, 8 through 9. If you know this, the fast was concerning the burning of Jerusalem and the temple. And so they consulted. Now, should we weep? I want you to think with me. Should we weep? When I want to ask you this question. When was the last time, as you go before God, you have wept? When was the last time as you go for prayer that you really bawl, cry out to God? When was the last time? They asked Hag Haggai and they asked Zechariah the question. They said, should we weep? When we go before God, should we? Listen, there's nothing wrong. There's a blessing when you can shed tears. Tears are a language God, he understands. It's a long time sometimes that we as God's people, we haven't gone in prayer and fasting and cry out to God and say, God, here are we. Here am I. I need your forgiveness. I need your healing. I need your touch. I need your anointing. I need you to do something for me. When was the last time? You know, we like the microwave prayer. That we say them quickly and then we disappear. But God, he likes when we come to him and we persevere. Impertune. He likes when we come to him. And we spend quality time before him. So they asked him the question, should we weep? And speaking of the community of the exile. Fasting and weeping has to do with shedding of the tears of contrition. You know when you are broken before God, you can bow. Every Christian should be broken somewhere. Sometime in your life you need to be broken. If it's a long time you haven't gone to God in brokenness, perhaps you need to go. We like when our children, they come and they cry to us. We don't want them to go to anybody else and cry. We want them to come to us, Mom, I'm hungry. Dad, I'm hungry. And if you're like me, I don't like my children to be hungry. I like when I know they're eating. And who wants their children to be hungry? I don't want my children to go and beg others for food. I want to make sure that they receive. You and I, we should be so hungry, thirsting after righteousness. That we run to God. And like these men we said. Is it time to fast? Should we continue with it? Now when they fasted in the Old Testament. The Bible teaches that they would have rent their garments. And remember it was in Joel that says. Rend your heart and not your garment. Some people say rend. He didn't say that. But he said rend your heart. There should be contrition. There should be brokenness. When they fasted then, they put on sackcloth. And they put on earth on their head. And so it was, a, it was a whole process. And so the question they asked was a legitimate one. 
Should we continue to do that? Or should we cease doing it? In the New Testament. And if you look at the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. That's in our New Testament. We're going right back to it. But in, in, in the New Testament. In chapter 6. You'll notice something wonderful there. In the New Testament. Jesus said in verse 16. Moreover when you fast. Be not as the pretenders are hypocrites. Of a sad countenance for they disfigure their faces. That they may be what appear unto men to what to fast. Jesus said unto you verily. They have their what? Their reward. But thou. When you fast. Anoint your head. And wash your face. Why did Jesus say that? Because. When you fast. You're fasting unto God. Not unto men. Look at verse eight, 18. Sorry. That thou appear not unto men to fast. But unto your father. Which is in secret. And your father which see it in secret. He shall reward us all. Openly. So the New Testament teaching, nobody else could have taught about fasting better than Jesus, our master. And he says, not if you fast, but when you fast. Prayer and fasting, they go together. And that is why the great inquiry came about the whole idea of fasting. But I also want to look at the same passage, Matthew chapter 6. Because there are three religious practices in Matthew chapter 6. The first one, if you notice, verses 2, 3, and 4. Therefore, when thou doest your arm, when you are giving, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites, the friendly pretenders do, in the synagogues or in the churches and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their what? They have their reward. But when thou doest arms, when you give, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That thine arms may be in secret, and your father will see it in secret himself. He shall reward you what? Open it. Whatever you do for the kingdom, you're not doing it to be heard or seen of others. There are some things, listen carefully. When you give, if it's going to be a blessing to others and help others to give, then there's no problem. That's not the Jesus is talking about the whole idea of what's your motive. So if my motive when I give, if I put $100 in the plate, listen carefully. And by giving the hundred, someone out there's faith was wavering. And they do have a hundred too. But they were thinking of giving twenty dollars. But because they realized the pastor had thrown a hundred. And not because he has money. But he has given a hundred. And that going to strengthen your faith. And said, but you know, if he can give, I can give as well unto the Lord. Then there's nothing wrong. Your motive for giving was to help others. So that as well they can give unto the Lord. And the church said... Jesus is talking about, listen carefully, that's why he said do not be as a hypocrite do. Because they will give, just want people to see that they are contributing to the church. Some people will only give if pastor mentioned it from the pulpit, not in this church. We're speaking about the other church, right? But some people will give only if the pastor mentioned their name from the pulpit. You know, sister... I'm trying to figure out her name, Zachariah. We don't have a Zachariah here. We have Brother Zachariah in the scriptures. So, Sister Zachariah would only give once her name is going to be mentioned. Jesus is saying, when you give, because our God, He see it in secret. You know, the thing about God, God, He's sitting in secret, He watches everything from a secret chamber. 
He sees everything that we do. You know, we cannot impress God. And some people think they can. You can't do nothing to impress God. All you can do is to live a holy life. And when you live a holy life, God will be pleased. That is why in your daily walk with God, you walk humbly before him. You don't have to give for others to shout and say, wow. So three religious practices mentioned in Matthew 6, 2 through 18. Let's look at the second one. The second one is what? Is prayer. In verse 5, and when thou prayest, Jesus speaking here, do not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues as in the church and in the corners of the streets. That they may be seen of men, verily I say unto you, they have already received their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into your what? Closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to your father who is in secret, and your father which seeth in secret shall reward you how? Openly. When you do it secretly, God will openly reward you. Let's go on, verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much rhetoric. It doesn't mean, listen, that you shouldn't pray intelligently. But do not allow, because you master the English language, that you're simply saying, I'm going to show how eloquent I am and how I can pray. Remember with the Pharisees and the publican? Jesus said one went down to his house, what? Justify, that's the publican. But the Pharisee went and said, I'm better than everybody. I can pray, I fast twice a week. I do this, I do that. But Jesus said, Look at, listen, he isn't getting any blessing. I want to tell you, if you want the blessing of God, do it right. Listen to what he said, be not he therefore like unto them. So Jesus said, discourage us. For your father knows what things you have need of before you what? Before you ask. Then he went on to say, be not he therefore like unto them. Let's go, verse 9. Your father knows what you're in need of before you what? Before you ask anything. And I want to think about it. After this manner, he taught them to pray. And he says, you know, you know, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we're going to finish right there with it. But you know one thing that you notice as he taught them? The simplicity of prayer. And this prayer should two things. should be simple and should be sincere. Say it with me. Prayer should be simple and should be what? That's how you get the power. When you pray, pray from your heart. You know this when Pastor Cobb, I don't have a book of prayer that I read to you. That was written by someone else. That's not my words. I don't have to come and read a book of prayer. I've taken, you know, I've been in national events. We have sometimes prayers were given to pray. I'm unhappy. But I just follow the protocol. <laughs> but you don't, listen man, you pray from your heart. Jesus said, when you pray, make it simple. When you pray, be sincere. So you cry from your heart. That's the prayer that God answers. That is why all you can say, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Many people enter into the kingdom of God. People you thought have been written off. God heard their prayers because they prayed from your heart. God had forgiven them and now they're on their journey home. When you pray, make it simple. And he says, be sincere. You know this, most of Jesus' prayers, they were prayed in private. And the church said, amen. You can count how many times Jesus prayed in public. But as human beings, we love publicity bad. But Jesus said, when you pray, don't do that. But let's move from prayer. Let's go to our subject on this. 16. In that same passage, Jesus talk about fasting. When we fast, we will get heaven's attention. I want to say it again. 
when you and I fast, we will get what? Heaven's attention. Sometimes the prayer, prayer is power. But sometimes you got to take it more than the prayer. Because some things you'll never get result unless you learn to fast. It's one thing, listen, just deny yourself a food that is important and tell yourself, I want to get so close to God. And the moment you start to, you notice what Jesus did, he prayed, but he was fasted. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. That's those who are fasted for 40 days, 40 nights. I know I didn't get any hand. 30 days and 30 nights. I'm not asking to fast that long. And most of us, we might have just fasted about three days. And by three days, we can't move. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. They disfigure their face. So Jesus tells us how we are to pray fast. When you fast, you don't have to wear a long dress that everybody know you have been fasting. When you fast, you don't have to go around telling everybody, boy, I'm fasting today. You don't have to do that. That's what Jesus is saying. But when you fast, make it between you and your God. Sometimes you might fast your breakfast. You might fast a lunch. Or sometimes for the entire day. You just fast. But when you fast, you will get heaven's attention. God will say, I'm hearing you. Daniel prayed, remember? He prayed for a long time, seeking answers concerning the future of the Gentile, Gentile nation. Others were there praying with him. But the fast and the prayer went too long. And they left him. Jesus did the same thing. The disciples left him. And Daniel, after praying and fasting for 21 long days, then he received the answer. And the answer came to him. Daniel, from the first day you started to pray, your prayers were answered. You fast and pray. But the prince of Persia, demonic principalities and powers, they made it difficult for me to come. But after warring with them, I'm now come to give you the answer. I'm simply saying, church, if you want to see the glory of God and to see God work in your life, take time out to pray and to fast. Fasting, remember, you will get heaven's attention. Prayer, you get power. And when you give, you're going to get blessings. God increase. We will increase your blessings when you give. So you give. People talk about uh, everything offering, offering. If you want blessing, 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 give. That one miss you, right? If you want a blessing, 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 then give, give, give. You can never outgive God. And I challenge any church. And that is why, listen, you are able to do more than you can ever imagine. Because you give unto God. And you'll never run. Listen, your gasoline will never run out. All the prices go up. God will give you more than you can ever imagine. God will give you his blessing. Because what? You have given unto him. Give unto God. You'll get back the blessing. Pray. You'll get power. And fast, and angels, the God of heaven, will grant you his attention. So the question was answered. Let's move on to the second point. So the question came from the delegation, great deputation, coming from Bethel, asking Haggai and asking Zechariah and the priests, shall we continue with prayer and fasting? Not prayer, but especially fasting, should we? We have been doing it. But should we continue? I want to go to chapter 7 and verse 4 of Zechariah. The prophets reply, you ask a question, you expect an answer, am I right? But let's look at verse 4. Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying. You see verse 4? Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying. 
And you're going to find it going, verse 8, you're going to find the same thing. The word of the Lord came to him. The word of the Lord came unto Zacharias, saying. Then you look at verse, um, uh, chapter 8 and verse 1. You're going to find the same thing. The word of the Lord came unto Zacharias, saying. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, what? Say. And then if you look at verse 18 of the same chapter, chapter 8. You'll notice that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, what? Say. Word of the Lord of hosts came unto me, what? Say. So in other words, four times you notice that God is speaking to Zechariah. God, you know, you know when God is speaking. Let's see the last time God has spoken to you. Show me your hand. Last time God has spoken to you. never got the silence the last time God has spoke you see if I ask you last time you have spoken to God you tell me pastor just a while ago but I ask you in the reverse when is the last time God has spoken to you hear this you will never hear an audible voice you'll never hear God says Omari or James or John, you're not going to call out to hear the voice. Because you might think it's somebody calling you. But God somehow, by his Holy Spirit, he can speak to us. And certain situations you find yourself in that you need answers. God, he can speak. But let me tell you how he can speak. He can speak to you through the power of his Holy Spirit. He just plays upon you. And you know it's from God. Sometimes you go to the word of God. Listen to me carefully. And when you read the word of God, God word just speak into your life. You have never seen it like that before. God speak to us when we are on our knees in prayer. Sometimes it's just a silent and God is like God is saying, just listen to me. Because sometimes in our prayer, we talk in all the time, like a monologue. God is saying, I need a dialogue. I need you to communicate with me. So sometimes in our prayers, we just have to wait and God to speak back to us. Because it's a two-way, communication is two-way street. And so when God speaks to us, then we have to listen. That's why he gives us two ears. So God was speaking to the prophet. The prophet says, Four times, four messages. Listen, he needed answers to give to those people. Listen, many, listen, be careful about those that you go to for answers. Because some, they give you all such a bogus answer. Some people, they want you to feel good when you go to them. Go to people who know God and you believe they are in communication with God. And when they speak, you know that they have been in touch with Almighty God. Too often, that's why we run in trouble. The wrong source, our friends. I know you love your friend, but they don't have the last say. But brothers and sisters, when you go to people who are in touch with God, like Zechariah and Haggai and the Old Testament prophet, when you go to God and ask for help, I want to tell you, God will send people in your life to give you help. It's amazing how God speaks. Sometimes when you're frustrated and discouraged and you're down, sometimes it might be just a telephone call coming from New York. Man, you haven't heard from the person for what he said. I just called to tell you I'm praying for you. I just called to whisper this verse in your spirit. He said, my God, I was on my face. Or it might be someone, might be a member of the church just called and said, just called to listen, tell you that we are praying for you. It's amazing. God speaks through people. He speaks through our husbands. And the husbands say, Amen. Wives, listen to your husband. And the wives say, You are that weak. Husband, listen to your wives. And the husbands say, Amen. Why that stronger? Oh, first time I get that. <laughs> but God speaks through people. If you're in prayer meeting on Saturday, thank you, Sister Emily. She used the book of Nehemiah. 
And that often I hear it from a young person. And she went through the book of Nehemiah and just give her light and just tell, listen, he was named a cupbearer, not a minister, not a prophet, but just a cupbearer. And God spoke through him and gave him messages so that he could go and rebuild Jerusalem. And then I heard from Sister Ponte in her prayer. What a powerful prayer. I'm not listening. Sorry to be single on name, but it made an impression on me when I listened to, to these things. And as she prayed, one of the prayers she said, she said, listen, Lord, I don't want to miss it when you come. I want heaven to be my home. I told my husband. In other words, she was so impacted with what God is doing in her life. And I'm saying, brothers and sisters, when you have this nearness to God and your love for God, God will make you invincible in the midst even of your enemies. He is to live close to God. So God spoke through the prophets and God wants to speak to you. But let's look at the purpose of their fast. Verse 5. And I want you to look at it's going to be a short message today. Chapter 7, verse 5. Speak unto all the people of the land. This is what he says. And to the priests say, When you fast and mourn, he wants everybody to know when you fast and mourn in the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years, did he at all fast unto me, even unto me? He said, you have been fasting all these months. But who did you fast to? Did you fast unto me? Or did you fast unto yourself? You know, Jesus in the New Testament said, when you fast, make sure you have the right motive. And so the question was asked, did you fast unto me or did you fast unto yourself? So don't just put yourself, your food aside and say, well, I'm going to fast because I'm going to try something. I want the good one. I want to lose some weight, so I'm going to do some fasting. The motive is wrong. You don't know, fast because you want to lose weight. If you want to lose weight, you go to the ocean and swim. You buy a cycle and you ride. Or you go walk in the afternoons or in the mornings. But you fast because of spiritual needs. Physical is different from spiritual. But there's benefit as well. When you fast a lot, as well you will shed some pounds. But that's not the whole motive. The problem is that when you fast, God asks the, the question to them. He said to the prophet, did you fast unto me or did you only fast unto yourself? Look at verse 6 of chapter uh, 7. Of Zechariah. And when you did eat, and when you did drink, did not you eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? God is challenging. When you eat and when you drink, when you fast and you did to me. Look at verse 7. Should you not hear the words which the Lord had cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her when men inhabited the south and the plain? In other words, God was saying that the purpose of your fast must be a very serious one. Two fasts they commemorated. One, the assassination of the Jewish governor Gedaliah. And then the destruction of Jerusalem. God said, I didn't command you to do it. He says, your practice was empty. I didn't get any glory out of it. So all the time they were fasting in captivity. God said I wasn't getting any blessing. You know you can talk to God many prayers and God said I'm not hearing. And I'm going to tell you why. Let's move on in the scripture. And we're going to find it. The word of the Lord came unto Zachariah saying. Verse 8. And then verse 9. And thus speaketh the Lord of hosts saying. When you fast, execute true judgment. Show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. Verse 10. Oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. Let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. When you fast, hear what God says. 
go to him with a clean heart. Many times we pray, but God isn't answering our prayers. You know why? Because our hearts aren't clean. When you fast and when you pray, it's important, church, that we drop the weight. You cannot have hatred in your heart towards a brother or sister and then go to God in prayer. He says, I sign off. And that's what Jesus was speaking about. When you pray, don't be like a hypocrite. When you pray, prayer must be genuine. Fasting must be genuine. There must be a seriousness about it. I'm going to God because by the grace of God, I've taken an introspection of myself. And by the grace of God, I want to live for God. So you speak about the empty of the day practice. Seven to ten, he says, social justice. But listen, he said to them, oppress not the widow, the fatherless, the poor. That's verse 10 of chapter 7. And he said, not, let, let none of you imagine evil against your brother in your heart. So if you have evil in your heart against your brother, you can't fast. So Jesus said, get up. Stop the prayer. And he says, you're evil in your heart. And too often people are so wicked in their hearts. And if God should just turn it out, people would say, wow. God going to put our hearts on the screen someday. It's like we have this screen, I can't read it. And everybody it will flash across. And God will say, that's the person that you're dealing with. Because you see, sometimes, as we said in our Sunday school class, we're good at putting on the mask. And some masks can fit some people better than some. You know that some people have all sorts of color. And it fit them nicely. Well, that's the physical mask. But we are talking the real mask. You cannot mask Christianity. Christianity must be genuine. And Jesus said, how can you treat people so badly? How can you hate your brother? How can you curse your sister? How can you hate your members of your church? How can you do this? How can you do that? And yet you're praying? He said, I'm not hearing those prayers. That's why you're not getting victories. If you want victory, let go. Let go. Let God turn your heart around. Change your motive. And brothers and sisters, when you get in touch with God and God begin to touch your life, you're going to show the change. There must be a change. Therefore, if any man be in crisis, what? All things are passed away. Start treat people well. Let your words be genuine. When you talk to people, make sure it's genuine coming from your heart. Sometimes you talk to people, my God, you know, if heaven should open, you know. What they're saying is like the east is from the west. Stop mass Christianity. And let's live lives that will bring honor to God. That's what God said to the prophet, not my word. He said to Zechariah, tell them. All the time they're fasting. Who are they fasting to? Not me. God said, I was hearing one word you were saying. So when they ask answer, should we continue? You know, the answer would have been, why waste time? You're not ready. When you come to the house of God, listen to me carefully. You come with an open heart. You come to receive from God. You know, there are people, they come to church, brother, somebody going to sing this morning, can't sleep. How can you do it? Is somebody going to exhort your head down on this? You don't want to hear. You think that's new? Let us point out in scripture what Jesus said. Let's look with me now on the, on the 11th verse. The Lord scolded them and said, you imagine evil. Look at verse 11. But they refused to listen, listen it, to their fathers. And they pulled away the shoulder. They struck the ears that they should not hear. 
It's not new. People do the same thing in church. There are some big ones that face go up there. My God. They stop the air. Listen, if you cannot listen to others, then brothers and sisters, why should I listen to you? When you're a child of God, stop the foolishness. Stop the childishness. Get in touch with God. When you're children of God, it doesn't matter who is ministering, who is teaching the Sunday school. Brothers and sisters, you all want to be blessed. How often sometimes, that's why, listen to me, the world will laugh at us. And that's why what we need more of God, sometimes people talking to you. That's what happened in the scripture. God said when the prophets were speaking, just close up your ear. Listen to what people have to say. Change your behavior. Check your attitude. And if your attitude is not right, get it right. God can help you. And often you have more praises and shout than anybody else. But yet your heart is not right. That's what God says. He said, I couldn't hear your prayer. Should you continue the fasting? How would you continue? I'm not going to hear it. Look at verse 12. Powerful words. Yet they made their hearts as an adamant stone. You know what an adamant stone? Flint stone. Diamond stone. Hard. They made their heart as hard as that lest they should hear the law and the words which the lord of hosts has sent in their spirit verse 12 by the former prophets therefore came i came a great wrath from the lord of hosts therefore verse 13 let's go to it it is come to pass that as you cried and they would not hear so they cried and i would not hear either said the lord of hosts but i scattered them with a whirlwind among the nations whom they knew not thus the land was desolate after them that no man passed through nor returned for they laid the pleasant land what desolate god says a serious problem you have here god is saying listen i want to do things but because what i'm seeing i cannot bless you God is saying, I cannot do anything. There is great rebellion. There is apostasy. I want to tell you, listen, brothers and sisters, we need to be open to Almighty God. I long to see, I sometimes hear testimony of persons in the church and I said, oh God, make it happen. And they would say, they cry to see the old day days when people got down on their knees and cry to unto God. And you know, genuine lips, man, conversion was genuine. Today, people get saved, not even a tear. When you do wrong, you have to cry. If you're really remorseful, you're gonna go there with God and try to cheer. Huh? You want to get saved still, but no, that's not how it works. There must be a turning point in your life. That God, you said, listen, search me, oh God. Know my heart, I pray. Try me, oh Savior. Read my thoughts. You know them. He knows our thoughts. He knows our heart. You're crying to God. God, use me. I want you to. Listen, man. God said, can I use you if there's sin in your heart? You remember what David did in Psalm 51? Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness. He said, God, break me up. He said, create in me a clean heart. He said, God, renewing me a right spirit. You cannot get the glory of God and get touched by God unless you change your behavior. God wants to change us. That's how revival will come to a land. You want the blessing of God in St. John's as never before. As I said, the greatest days are before us. Let the peace of God begin to in sincerity, genuineness. Go to God and say, God, I surrender my all. My foolish thoughts, my foolish behavior, my childish ways. I surrender it. Let go to God. That's what we need. I let go. Create in me, God. Do something. 
I cannot do for myself. God said to Zechariah the prophet, you fasted many, listen, for 70 years. How many years? 70 years they were fasting. God said, I wasn't hearing their prayer. He said, I wasn't there with them. I did not even, I wasn't there, I was on their streets. Church, if God is not in our congregation, we're wasting time. If God is not in our heart, the prayer won't go anywhere. God is saying, you listen, David says, search me, oh God. Search me. Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately what? Wicked. We need a transformation. Let's move on from in verse chapter 8. Hear our expression again. The word of the Lord of hosts came unto me what? Saying, God is speaking. And when God speaks, you better listen. Zechariah said, listen, it's not my own volition. I'm not speaking from my own intellect. He says, God, again, the word of the Lord spoke unto me, saying, speak. To, Thus said the Lord of hosts, verse 2. I was jealous for Zion, the promises of God to his servant. Chapter 8, 1 and 2 now, verse 2. The Lord of hosts was jealous for Zion, his people, with great jealousy. I was, I was jealous for her with great what? Fury. In other words, he is jealous in his determination to restore Zion. But he's also furious against their enemies. That's the idea in verse 2. I'm jealous because I want to restore Zion. You might be a believer in this place, a Christian. You'll be a Christian for five years, ten years. Listen, you can leak out. You want to say you can leak out. And some of us, we can be active in church, but we are not there spiritually. And God knows. You can leak out. God says, I'm determined to restore. You see, God doesn't want us to die in sin. So he said, I'm determined to restore what the canker worm has eaten. I'm willing to restore God's blessing. I want to bless you, but you need to be at the place. My prayer is this morning, may God take a hold of us that we say, God, not me, but it's you, God. I want to see Jesus and you alone. Jealous in his determination to restore Zion. God wants to put you back on your feet again. And don't play the game with God because you can be in the church, you say five years ago, but God knew you're backslidden. Ten years ago, you're backslidden. You show up in church and say, Pastor, I'm here, present. But tell God that you're here to receive from Him. And you want to change. After 70 years of captivity, the Lord said, here's, here it is, after 70 years of Babylonian captivity, verse 3 said, thus said the Lord, I am returned unto Zion. God said, I want to come back to my place. And will dwell within the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called what? The city of what? Truth. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts. The holy mountain. You know what God said? God said this is his church. Not Pastor Shad, sir. This is what? His church. He said, I want to return. I want center stage. I want the musicians to give me center stage. I want the worship team to give me center. I want the ushers. I want the pastor. I want every board member. God is saying, I want center stage. We live in a world today, especially in the church, my God. Everybody has some bishop this, general this. Buy some big titles. That's when they have no title at all. But they give themselves, they want to look so big, at hustle this. You can give yourself any name you want, I don't have a problem. But all I'm simply saying, make sure that God he has the preeminence in your life. 
He must be number one. Serve him in spirit and in truth. Get excited about him. Every walk you take, tell God, unless you're guiding me, I cannot go the right direction. You need God's blessing. You need his anointing. You need his touch upon your life. Lord, do something that nobody else can do. Only you alone can do it. Brother, when God save you, remember what happened many years ago? For those in the church for many years, remember when the Lord changed your life, the whole community knew. Where you were, they knew that. Today you're saved, today, and even you go tomorrow, you cuss them the same way. And they wonder what's happened. There has to be a change. And God said, I want to return unto Zion. I want to return unto my house. I want to have the preeminence. I want to have first place. I want the blessing of God to fall upon my church again. This is his church. And God, we pledge allegiance to you. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Give God some praise because it's his church. After 70 years of captivity, God said, I want to return to Zion. Zion has been cast aside. You know one of the reasons sometimes things, the curses come upon you because the blessings have leaked out. All the blessings of God. Look at verse, let's go on, verses 4 and 5. Peace and rest will return to Jerusalem when God comes. Look at verse 4. Thus said the Lord, chapter 8 of Zechariah, verse 4. Thus said the Lord of hosts, there shall yet all men, all women, dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very old age. And the streets of the city shall be full of what? Boys and girls playing in the streets again. You know what God is saying? There's so much violence and affliction and corruption and everything so that the old people can be in the streets again. It's not a sad day, many of us, when we go to a home, we hear a neighbor home be broken in. We hear your park a vehicle on there stolen. We hear someone at their, the, 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 the shop, their shopping for the Burger King or whatever. Whatever. But then, someone walk in and held them up. Not a sad day. When our older folks can sit on their galleries again. And enjoy the breezes. It's a sad day. When our children or boys and girls. Cannot walk the street. We heard recently. Of a hard headed and hard back man. Who sexually assaulted a seven year old child. Is that real? You know, my suggestion is to put a rope around there, swing him seven times and send him into the sea. He's sick. And only when it happened to us, and only when he come close to our family, then we understand what's happening. Some of us will sit back and we say, listen, well, it doesn't bother my family, my kids, everybody's safe. But there are others who are in trouble. God is saying, I want something to happen again. And I believe that the church can clean up the streets so that these gunmen and all those spirits, they need to realize that God is moving. Churches have been broken in. And sometimes after they're broken in, they use the pulpit as a toilet. Yes, it happened. Their feces scattered. If I listen, God was like, man, they'll never excrete again. But only the mercy of God. That's what's happening all around. But God says, peace and rest will return to Jerusalem when you get back in touch with me. You see the problem? He said, when you get back in touch with me, the older folks will be able to walk the streets again. Aren't you glad for that? And the children will be able to play. Because what? God will give hope to his people. Chapter 8. 7 through 8. 
Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. Verse 8. And I will bring them and they will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. That verse 9. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in those days these words in the, in the, in the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be what? Built. God is saying, listen, God will give hope in the midst of that. Anxious times, 9 to 13 of chapter 8, anxious times will be no more. But I like what verse 11 says. I'm skipping down verse 11. But now I will not be unto the residue of the people as in the former days said the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous and the vine shall give her fruit and the ground shall give her increase. Verse 12 of chapter 8. And the heaven shall give their due and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. Verse 13. And it shall come to pass that as you were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you and you shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be what? Strong. Anxious times will be no more. The curse will be lifted and the blessings of God will take over. Only thing that we have to do as we read the last verses. Well, I just want to, to read verses 21 to 23. And I want everybody to look at it. 21 to 23 of chapter 8. This is what God said to the people of Jerusalem and Judah. The inhabitants of one city, verse 21 of chapter 8 of Zechariah. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying let us go speedily to pray before the lord and to seek the lord of hosts i will go also many people and strong nations shall come to seek the lord of hosts in jerusalem and to pray before the lord verse 23 last verse then thus said the lord of hosts in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of the garments of nation, our language of nation, even shall they hold of the garments of him that is a Jew, saying, We will not go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Rather than staying away, people will begin to say, We will go now to the house of God, because we have heard that God is with you. Is it not time St. Johnson's village that people hear that God is in this place? God is with you. I'm going to follow you to church. I'm going to join in this Sunday school contest. I'm going to be here. I'm going to come to the worship service. I want to get blessed by God. I want things to happen in my life. Because what? Things have changed in our lives. When God's people get serious with God, revival will come. And you ask yourself the question many times, why is it that I'm not impacting? Remember one time you were more impacting? Remember the days that you would invite your friends to church and they would come? Hello? Remember those days that you would shout to them and say, listen, Listen, I have service and son. I tell you, I, I, I can't afford to miss it. And I don't want you to miss it either. It has been a blessing to me. When was the last time? That's what God wants to do in your life. Take off the mass. Or authenticity. The authentic Christian. That's what God wants. So that the blessing of God will fall upon us. And when people even reach to the gate, when they hear the shouts coming from the God's house, God, they can't pass. I've seen people get saved like that. They say they reach the church, they were in problems. 
And they said they couldn't pass. God led them to the service. They gave their hearts to God. I remember one time in All Saints, there was that Sunday night. I wouldn't call the young lady's name because everybody would know she's a nurse. She doesn't go to that church anymore, but thank God involved in another church. So you would not even try to figure it. And remember in that service, that's a Sunday night service, not many persons were there. But God gave me a word. And I didn't expect a person's gonna move forward. But that young lady, she got up out of her seat and she came to the altar. And she made that commitment, that surrender. Today, she's a wonderful nurse. Today, she's a wife of a minister and serving God. Always a joy, blessed people. I saw it happen. Sometimes when you think nothing is happening, God is moving by his spirit. And I'm sure through their lives, many more would have come to know Jesus. All I'm simply saying, when we start to do the right thing, it's amazing what God will do. We can't just sit back and all you do, you complain and you criticize and you critique this and critique that. Get over it. Take up the childishness. And you need to tell yourself, I want to be a soul winner. You heard on Wednesday night when the animal talk spoke about soul winning. He who wins soul, the wise. And how God wants us to be soul winners. Are you not concerned about those who are lost? Every time I look handsome, I go to the barber. Every time, before I look sorry, I will go to the barber. Barber made the point. And I had another minister from another denomination over there. But he made this solid you know, point. He said, he said, I don't know. But all of my life, I've never seen things like this before. He said, the world is something that's wrong. And I said to him, a friend of minister, if I call you, you'll know it. Girl, I didn't know. He laughed. And I said to him, you see, you have a sermon for tomorrow. You have a sermon for tomorrow. He has been to this church before. I stayed there for more than once. He would say to me, Pastor Shah, he said, I love your church. You saw why I love it? He didn't say like, he said, I love it. He said, I noticed when I came that you seemed to think about the, the congregation trying to help the poor and trying to encourage this. And we used to have the basket set and, and on and on. He could see us trying to, it's such a wonderful thing. Not a Christian, but he's telling me, like advising me like you try to do it. You know, it's amazing. And I say, God bless you. I say, it's not me. It's a ministry of the church. But the point I'm making is that, listen, we need to reach the place that we impact people so much because of our walk with God. People watch you, they listen to you, they speak to you, and they're going to draw their conclusion. So rather than making all sorts of negative noise, start bringing people to the house of God. Change your ways. And God will help you. God will help you. Let's all stand together. Let's all stand. Let's all stand together. Everybody stand. And listen to this. If you're a member of this church, if you're a Christian, I'm going to give you an invitation just to meet me right here at the altar. We don't sing in a song. If you're a believer, I'm going to ask you just to come. Just meet me right here at the altar. From the back, come. If you're a Christian, come on. If you're a Christian, you're coming to meet with Almighty God. No worry about the mass. Your people, they are safe. Amen. We are brothers and sisters. We're going to heaven together. Amen. Okay, so you come, come. If you're, if you're a Christian, come, 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 come. Come. And if you're not a member of the church, but you're a Christian, I know some of you physically, you cannot make it, I understand. But what a Christian, listen, there should be that burden, that desire. Everyone, that desire. You want other people to be saved. If the Baba could know, he has never seen anything like that. He's not a Christian. 
But that's an opportunity to know that God is speaking. God is doing something. And God is saying to the people of Jerusalem, when you begin to serve me the way I ought to be served, then people will flock into your church again. That's what we want to see happen. Am I right? With your heads bowed, your eyes closed. Don't think about the person next to you. Think about yourself. Because God's going to judge you. And you know your heart. And you know, and, and listen, it's not, there's a real enemy. There's a devil that is fighting us. And I know the devil does want us to make it. And that's why, listen, he's playing games with you. So don't go, don't play games with him. Listen, he's going to win if you play games. So you need to say to him, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And everybody on the platform, everywhere, I want you to, your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Ask the Lord to search you right now. Say, Lord, search me, oh God. Just tell him, God, search me. He knows, he knows. You can, listen, take off the mask. Just say, God, search me. I've called, I've, I've, I've gone away from you. I, I've fallen. I cannot pretend everything is all right. Many times I've done this. I've gone around. I've said things. I've done this. God, I'm miserable. I need you. Just begin to talk to him. Tell him about yourself. Search me, oh God. Know my thoughts. Know my heart. I have wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. It was a captivity which purified Israel from idolatry and making her faith a universal religion. God had to bring them into captivity. Listen. God sometimes has to bring us down for us to realize that he is God. Sometimes we get so inflated. Sometimes it's all about you and it's not about God again. Sometimes you wonder to yourself, God, listen. Sometimes I don't know, I wonder. I say, God, listen, you have been, you have been putting us with our foolishness. But God, remind me my grace and mercy. Go ahead and pray. Let's call up talk to God. Father, in the name, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we look to you today. We are tired of sin. We are tired of deadness. We are tired, oh God, of being in captivity. The children of Israel were in captivity for 70 long years. And the Bible says they fasted and prayed, but God said they didn't call upon me. They didn't fast. Had it not been for my prophetic plan, they would still have been in captivity. Had it not been for my servant Zechariah and Haggai and Zerubbabel and the others and Nehemiah, and all those who prayed and believed God, I would not have delivered them. But you said to them, you're jealous, that you, you, you're determined to restore them to the place that they need to be. I pray for restoration in our lives. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us of our foolishness. Forgive us of the things we have done we should not. Lord, forgive us. And help us to get back to Bethel. Get back to the place where Jacob met you. And he said he knew God is in this place. I pray in Jesus name that here in our church. That many people run to this church. Run to the altar. Because God has restored us. The blessing again. Lord, remove every curse, we pray. I pray that you'll go, God, you, you'll make oh, a curse come upon those who refuse to allow God to be Lord of their lives today. I pray in Jesus' name that God remove the curse so that the blessing can flow. There are people who need to be saved. They come to this church. There are people in the community, people all around. They need Jesus. We don't want to be hindrances. We don't want to have a form. But there's no power. Forgive us of our backsliding. Forgive us God of our deviousness. Forgive us of the mask that we have been wearing. 
Lord, the shoulders, as you said, when, when, when the prophet spoke to the people, Lord, they pushed their shoulder. Lord, they stopped their ear. It sounds like modern day people as they come to church. They don't want to listen. They're people they want to hear. But I pray in Jesus' name, even those they don't want to hear, help them to know is that the person is important. It's the word of God. So they want to hear the word of God again. Come through for us. Breakthrough for us. Give us visions. Give us victories. Oh God, we will die unless you come to our rescue. Restore unto us the joy of the Lord. Oh God, forgive us. Silver and gold cannot do it. But your precious blood this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Want every believer at the altar that's to raise your right hand to God. And say, dear God, I love you. Say it again, dear God. I love you. I want to serve you. I want to live for you. I know I've come short. But God forgive me and help me that I might start anew so that your blessings might follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Forgive me, God. We are a fail. And help me to love you again. To serve you again. To repent again. To turn to you again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God wants to do it in our lives, church. Listen, God wants to do it in our lives. We'll only be impacting when the change has come. It's not about listening. Mean, it's too late now. Even the unsaved, they are saying something is about this. Is the coming of the Lord? Something is about to happen. If the unsaved can see, why is it that the church we are silent? I don't want anybody to go to the devil's hell. God has a plan. God has a plan. God is speaking to us.